Thank the member. Recognize the member for Vancouver Fairview. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and a thank you to the member for North Vancouver Seymour for pointing out once again uh, how important the film industry in general is to BC's economy. She's quite right, as uh, Peter Leach has pointed out to the Standing Committee on Finance and Government Services. The industry is over a billion dollars. It does employ approximately 25,000 people directly, but beyond that, uh, with indirect uh, impacts and induced impacts on the economy, the numbers rise to over 80,000. Uh, hundreds of people are employed in post-production. It's a 30-year uh, industry in our province. It's a major investor in infrastructure, and that part of the film sector, indeed, is in the millions of dollars. The future of post-production services in BC is key to the digital future of our province, and the extension of the Dave tax credit will only help build this part of the industry. As the uh, member has pointed out, more of the production value chain will remain in BC. Foreign production will be encouraged to stay here and do the entirety of their production, including post-production. We have world-class facilities. It's good to see that they will be used. And one of the offshoots of the extension of this tax credit will be to uh, induce and incent more producers from away to do post-production here in BC, which may be the difference, finally, between whether any part of the production at all comes here. If you can do the whole production here, it is a good thing, it's an incentive to producers, and it will have, perhaps, an immeasurable impact on the industry. It will also promote domestic productions. It will be one more incentive, and it adds to our competitiveness. But, Honourable Speaker, I have to ask, when I look at the budget line for the extension of the digital animation and visual effects tax credit to post-production, it is a mere $2 million a year. I shouldn't say a mere $2 million. That is significant. But in the context of a large budget and the economic impact on BC, it seems like an amount of money that was promised in the election that shouldn't have waited two years to be brought in, particularly if, as the member for North Vancouver Seymour says, this is so important to the industry. Honourable Speaker, this was a long wait, and I scratch my head as to why this wasn't done in this government's first budget of this mandate. But if I'm thinking of reasons, perhaps I need look no further than the budget speech. When the finance minister talked about the value of a diversified economy in British Columbia, in keeping our heads above water when the price of oil dropped and others in Canada were feeling the impact, I looked for what he considered diversification in our economy, and I found five lines, Honourable Speaker, a mere five lines with respect to the creative industries generally and film. Five lines, while two pages, two entire pages, were devoted to the resource sector, which of course is important. But if we're talking about diversification, Honourable Speaker, we should respect the creative industries, we should support the creative industries, and we should do it sooner rather than later. Honourable Speaker, if we look at Creative BC, which plays a very important role in uh, not just film and television, but promoting music, book publishing, magazines, and art, we see that this is the agency that took over and incorporated BC film, but provincial funding has remained static. Speakers to the Finance Committee said what could be done with additional funding, and they pointed to the fact that Creative Saskatchewan has a budget of $7.4 million. Nova Scotia has $5.3 million, and yet here in BC, Creative BC remains funded at a mere $2.2 million. Honourable Speaker, people who presented to the Standing Committee on Finance and Government Services requested $15 million. Perhaps that is more than this government could have found. But, Honourable Speaker, Creative BC could do so much more, and the returns in jobs and taxes and economic development in British Columbia could be tremendous. We could be looking at project development, content development, export preparedness, market research and marketing, and taking this sector and marketing it to the world. That's something that Creative BC should be and could be doing if it was properly funded. So, Honourable Speaker, in closing, let me say it is a good thing 
that the Dave tax credit has been extended, but much more remains to be done to diversify our economy and support the creative industries. Thank you.